Hey, what's up everyone, my name is Thijs and welcome to part 20 of my devlog series for my game Tadpole Tales. A game taking place in an ever non-expanding lake where tadpoles took shelter after toxins were dropped during a fictional cold war. Who is this? Are you hacking uh, my channel? Uh, 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 look, 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 it's Rick! Wait. It's Rick! What? Hi, I'm Andrew and it's time to sit down and catch up on the development of Tadpole Tales, what I've been up to, and answer some of your questions. This week in Tadpole Tales, Giacomo and I have been working hard on making sure the user interface is responsive and easy to understand. We were again fortunate to have Rebecca, Giacomo's girlfriend, help us out with the layout. Now, in order to make it work, we need the data we've collected from the game scene pass on to the game over scene. So it was perfect time for me to start working on serialization. I have added a time counter that starts when the first wave begins. This will be useful for speedrunning purposes later on. The slider in the game over scene works by counting the wave index in the game and converting it between 0 and 1. I used smooth damp to give the slider a smoother effect. We wanted to create these really cute flags and I used the trigger component on both the knob and the flags to trigger each one of them. Rebecca again helped me animate the flags in order to make it look better and more professional. Now, with all the data being serialized, the game over scene can now display the data and look how smooth it looks. We then work on the extra scene and this is how it looks. Here you can watch the intro and the outro of the game, your best performance, and also it's a place for us to promote ourselves. Since this game will be released for free and we're not earning any money from this, I think the least we can do is to get some exposure from the hard work we've made during this year. Rebecca then again helped me on making the buttons even squishier than before. And now the buttons actually feel like a proper game button. I don't know how to describe that, but I think you understand my point. I then added the subtitles for the prologue and I've also made the prologue skippable. I'm not a big fan of how this skip button looks, but it works for now. If you have any suggestions on how the skip button should look like, please shoot me a message on Discord or anywhere. To marry this week, our sound designer worked on the two bosses' sound effects. Yes? You found him? Oh, okay. Okay, I'll let everybody know. I just found out who hacked my channel. He has a YouTube channel called Dual Wielded and is currently making a game called Encaved about an ever-expanding cave system where people took shelter after nukes were dropped during a fictional Cold War. I have linked him in the description. To properly report him, you have to click the red button. It is up to us to make this community safe and sound, and I cannot let such a hacker come in and hack the progress of Tadpole Tales. <laughs> okay, back to the devlog. And finally, my good buddy Thais, hacker, suggested that there is a pretty long animation of them dying, and they can still move around during that frame. It might be a cool idea to allow them to pick up a heart on the screen during that state. That could feel super clutch as they rush for it. I think that's amazing. I can't believe I haven't thought of that before. We have less than two months till our deadline and I'm honestly so scared. If you want to put more pressure on me, please consider to wishlist the game on Steam. It's a free game, so there's literally nothing to lose and you'd be doing me a great favor. So thank you so much if you're doing that. And in my life this week, because the weather seems colder, I'm trying my best not to overfeed Leggy. I think this little guy is doing fine, but some leaves have been falling off. I went to the Asian store and got some udon and it was super good and super tasty. 
I also made some pork bulgogi for my girlfriend. She seems to enjoy it very much. <laughs> And during my free time, my friend Seb and I, we're super excited for Shadowlands, which is coming up next week, and I hope that my productivity in Tapple Tales will remain the same. Let's talk game design ask. As a casual shoot 'em up fan, I am aware that of some scrolling shooters having a little visible point in the player sprite that clearly denotes where your hurtbox is. Does it have anything like that, or is it based on some casual experience where the difficulty most likely is going to ramp up very far? Great question! The game is rather small, so I'm not really sure how far this is going to go. <laughs> but in terms of the hitbox, the hitbox does change based on the tadpole evolving, so the sizes change. But more or less, we're trying our best to make it as forgiving as possible while not breaking the game. And that has been my week. Thank you so much for watching and giving us so many compliments. It really means the world to me and Giacomo. If you have any questions and would like me to answer in the next devlog, please leave a comment in the latest video with the word question and I will try my best to answer them either in the description or in the next video. Follow my Twitter if you want to get in touch with me and see daily updates. Thank you all for tuning in again and I wish you a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye.